Hey, what's going on, guys? My name is Dave here with Go Gamers, and today we're going to be taking a look at this PS5 game console that's having a video output issues. So let's go over to the upper camera and see what's going on. All right, so we have the PS5, and as you can see, this is regular standard PS5. Now, the um, the owner of the game console is claiming that they're having video issues. And let's go over to under the microscope because I was looking at it by myself and I didn't see any noticeable damage to the HDMI port. <clears throat> so let's go over to the micro and let's see what we can get here. Um, so as you could tell, let me turn the camera around so we can get a little bit of a better angle. There's not too much of a no, there's nothing really noticeable that's damaged. Now, there's really no telling if it's something like a broken pin off the motherboard or a retimer chip, an encoder chip, a EMI filter. It could be a number of different things that it could have been. I did try resetting it. If you guys haven't tried that, if you're having similar issues, Always try to reset the console first, meaning what you'll do is you'll plug into the power, you'll plug in your HDMI cable, and then you'll hold down the power button until you hear the second beep, then let go. If it doesn't show anything in safe mode, then it's more than likely going to be something internal. Um, and I want to show you guys this as well. So before we even get started, I do actually have some... HDMI port. So if it is a HDMI port for this one, the good thing about it is we don't need to retrofit any HDMI port. So we actually have the official real deal HDMI ports that we'll be able to put in here. So um, let's get it all opened up, see what's going on and see what we find out. All right, so we have our PS5 down to the motherboard right now. So as you can see on the upper cam, we have our HDMI port right here in this general area. Let's go over to the microscope and see what we can see. All right, so here is what our pins look like on the HDMI header on the motherboard. Uh, let's start testing it because they kind of look beat up. And, and as you can see, you see how these pins are wiggling. Um, that's not supposed to happen. And like you see that one moving. Um, yeah. So we're going to need to do a couple things. I'm going to um, lift this HMI port. And I'm going to have to re-solder down all the solder points on the HDMI header itself to make sure every single pack will be able to take the new HDMI port. I would not be using that old HDMI port because if the old HDMI port did damage like that, I'm not even going to risk putting that back in there. As you can see, and I'm going to see if this shows better under the microscope. As you can see, I have the exact HDMI port that could be able to replace that. So I have a brand new one. And here's our old one. So um, first things first, we're going to wrap this in Kapton tape. What this does is it reflects the heat off of it to make sure all the components around the HDMI port in the header itself is protected. So let's go over here to the upper cam and I'll show you guys how I do that right now. And if you guys need to purchase any type of Kapton tape, I would recommend finding um, something like this off of Amazon. Just type in Kapton tape. You should be able to find something at a reasonable price. Um, so we're going to do a couple things right here. I'm going to kind of do it like how I do it on PS4 Slims and PS4 Pros. So there is, looks like two components underneath it. And I want to show you guys what it looks like under the microscope under that HMI. As you can see, there's two very small components. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break off a small portion of some Kapton tape 
and I am going to um, just throw it right under it just to protect these components. As you see, I broke off just a small piece and you can always buy a smaller roll of Kapton tape just to make 100% sure, but I'm used to taking that big piece of Kapton tape and breaking it down like that. As you can see, I have both of those components protected. The good thing about it is too, if is if they do come off, it'll usually just stick to the Kapton tape. Um, and I always like to double it up, meaning that I put another piece of broken off tape on top just to make a hundred percent sure that it's not going to come off um i will have to say this is i have a success rate of about 98 percent of having these components not fall off of motherboards and if it does then it'll usually just stick to the tape okay so looks like the best point for me will be about right here. As you can see, there's a screw hole right here. Then there's a screw hole right under this clamp. So I clamped it right here. I don't feel too comfortable with putting the clamp over on this side, not with the way this table sits, um, just because it can bend and warp this board, especially when you're applying heat. Um, you could possibly popcorn a chip or tear up one of the chips from just heat getting to this motherboard. So this should be good enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my heat gun and I'll show you the type of heat gun that I have. This is a Wagner regular standard heat gun. Um, you could get this from Home Depot. What we're going to do is we're going to um, first off, take our fume extractor before we even turn on the heat gun. We're going to do a couple things. I'm going to put our fume extractor right here. I'm going to turn it on. Just making sure it sits right next to that HDMI port to collect any fumes to protect your lungs. Next thing we're going to do is take our pliers. And the type of pliers that I'm using, well, tweezers to be exact, are these some Husky tweezers. You could get these in bundle packs from also Home Depot. So what we're going to do is when we get under the microscope, I'm going to put the heat gun, just to give you guys a good angle, right under the HMI port. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my fan on high and I'm going to get my heat up to right here. So as you can see, the heat is right here. Turn that fan on high. And this is more than enough power to be able to get this HMI port off. So let's go over to the microscope. All right, so I have my heat gun on and running. I have the fume extractor right next to it. As you can see from the microscope, I have my heat gun next to it. And I'll show you how my setup is from right here. It's going to take just a little bit just to heat up this HMI port to be able to get it off. And at the same time, I also have my solder iron heating up just to get ready for this HMI port to be lifted. Because as soon as we get this off, I'm going to put down some flux on the header and we're going to resolder all the ports. All right, so we have our old HMI port off. And as you can see, the component on top is good. Everything is good. Let's get a little bit of a closer look. So as you can see, this HMI header is actually horrible. Um, <laughs> there's barely any solder on any of the pads. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Hackle solder iron from over here. I have it turned up to 190 degrees. I want to take this flux pan. You can get this off of Amazon. 8341 no clean flux paste. And this is what we're going to do with this flux paste. What this does is this helps flow the solder a lot better on the board just to make sure we can get a new um, roll of solder on there. And I'll show you guys the type of solder, solder iron, well, solder that I use. Um, this is um, Kester um, solder. 
as you can see you can hopefully you can see these details yeah this is also from amazon as you can see amazon and home depot are going to be your best friends with getting things so let's get flux all throughout those pads so the first thing i'm going to do is take my solder iron and my solder and I'm gonna hit all four of the anchor points on this motherboard. So we're gonna go here. And as you can see, um, we have new solder on the pads. It doesn't need to look pretty because once you melt it, it'll form and it'll look a lot better. And then it'll help the new HDMI port sit a lot better on those pads. So let's now take the solder that I still have on my solder iron and rub it across the header. Making sure we hit all pads. Try not to hit that component because if, especially if you have a good amount of solder on there, it will take off that component off the motherboard. And then you will have to re-solder that component. So just make sure we have no cross solder. Everything looks great. This is how a HDMI header is supposed to look. So what I'm doing now is I'm just going to put up my solder iron and we're going to move on to the next step. So as you can see, this is a way better HDMI port than the last one doesn't look like crap so um, I'm going to show you guys how I hold these HDMI ports in these tweezers um, there's a little opening right here so as you can see there is your middle black piece that holds your pins we're going to go on this top section of this housing to hold it inside of these tweezers like how we took it out with the tweezers and you want to be very careful not to mess up any of these pins so this is how i hold it you want to make sure you don't touch the inner pins or you will destroy them you'll have a broken hmi port before you even get into the one so i'm going to hold it about right there so you can kind of see how far i'm holding it in just to make sure um, now we're going to go under the microscope. The good thing about it is we still have flux on there. So I'm not going to apply any more flux. If you are out of flux, make sure you put a little bit more flux just so the solder can melt and flow a lot better. And I'm holding the ACM. I'm not holding the HDMI port over the HDMI header just yet. Because what happens is if you let it sit over it nine times out of ten, you'll end up melting the plastic within the HDMI port and that's something I don't want to happen so I keep it away until I notice all the solder points start to melt as you can see everything's flowing everything looks good now we're going to try to get this port in there as you can see I got it in real quick and smooth and I moved away the HM, I mean the um, heat gun so the heat gun is no longer next to it I'm just holding it down allowing the solder to um, rest around the HDMI port. And I did I don't apply barely any pressure when putting in these HDMI ports because if you apply too much pressure, you will break that middle plastic piece. So when you put it when you set it down in there, it wants you want to it wants it has to feel natural. Um, just because like if you just force it in there and the solder isn't fully melted, you'll end up just breaking the plastic piece or end up breaking one of the pins on the HMI header. So as you can see, this is what it looks like. And I am right, I'll show you exactly what I'm doing right now. Right now I'm going through and I'm double checking that plastic piece just to make sure I did not destroy it. And it is good, it's not destroyed and it looks to be seated, seated on there correctly. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our microscope. 
I'm going to put my microscope at an angle just so I can get a better view at these pins to make sure they're right where they need to be. So as you can see, all the pins are right above these pads and I still have my solder iron on. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to, and I'm not going to put any solder on my solder iron. Only time I do is uh, if there's a pin that doesn't want to connect properly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in, I'm going to take my solder iron, I'm going to put down flux first, and I'm going to go through and touch and individually solder down each and every single one of these pins. You see how I just did that one and soldered flowed on that one? That's how you want each individual pin to look. Um, so yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hook my microscope up to my TV just because when I have it hooked up to my computer, it's a little bit delayed. So just so I can be a hundred percent accurate with soldering down these pins, because if you're a little bit off, you can tear it up and you'll mess up the whole HDMI port. So I'm going to switch over to this and I'll show you guys what it looks like on that screen. And then let's get this HDMI port on there. All right. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to put down some of my flux on every single pad and with no solder on my solder tip because I don't want there's no need to have my solder tip tended already since we have all new solder down on each in every individual copper pad on this header it's going to be a little bit difficult for some people working around this component right here as it is for me even though i have a, a fine tip it's still a little bit more it's still a little bit difficult working around this component right here that they have so close to this header And pay close attention to how I sweep across every individual pin. I also do not apply much pressure. We will scrape off the copper, well, the solder and the copper pad at the same time, which you'll end up having to use some of this stuff and have it to redo the trace on the HDMI header, and that's not fun. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a toothbrush, and I'm going to take some IPA. This is 99%. I got this off of Amazon. And I am going to go through and thoroughly clean. And I'm going to show you on this screen. I'm going to thoroughly clean and brush off all the flux and debris off of this header. And I also want to see how good my solder job is. It's hard to see when you have all that flux just sitting on there so let's get it as much as we can off okay so i can see from just right here i will want to do a little bit better on these couple pads over here so i want to do this until i see the entire pen is silver so I'm going to go through, I'm going to hit these spots right here. As you can see, the pen is going from gold to silver. That's a beautiful connection.
and these pins over here are good they're just a little bit gold but i'm you can't do much with those just because of the component that they happen to have sitting literally right there which i think that's done strategically to stop people like me from working on these game consoles so um let's next things next want to take like a small little flathead screwdriver and we are going to um go through every individual pin not much pressure because you don't want to break it because if you put a lot of pressure on it it will break just a tad bit as much as i did when i initially came in here and tested the pins just a little bit a push test test just to make sure all the pins is set down correctly on the entire hdmi header beautiful so every pin is sitting 100 percent right so next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to take a cotton swab because i already used the toothbrush and i can use the toothbrush just a little bit more and i will but just to get a little bit more out of there i'm going to dip this in some ipa and i'm going to go in there and thoroughly clean it so i'm going to take the side with the ipa first get in there clean i'm going to flip it to the dry side and i'm just going to go around getting all the rest of the flux and debris from around it let's get this kapton tape off And as you can see, I, and I'm going to show you guys the Kapton tape. I always check to see if any components fell on the tape before I dispose of it. And now that I confirmed that no components fell into that tape, now I'm going to go through and thoroughly clean the entire, around the HMI port and the HMI port itself. So let's grab that toothbrush again. Let's dip it in some more IPA. Let's go back over here. Thoroughly clean it all up. And when I clean these pores too, I try my best not to get the toothbrush inside of the HDMI port itself just because I don't want any moisture to build up inside of those ports so that looks good so far and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one more cotton swab this time completely dry with no IPA whatsoever on it and I'm just gonna go around and I'm just gonna clean this all up So it seems like that'll be the best I'll be able to get it. Let's check underneath the HMI port. And as you can see, both that filter and that component is still right there. The solder connection looks beautiful. As you can see, this solder connection is bridged, which is an even better connection because that will ensure that this HMI port just won't end up falling off. So now it's time for just putting it all back together and seeing if this thing actually works all right so i put the ps5 almost back together because i didn't want to put it all the way back together and something else still be wrong so as you can see over here on the upper cam we got it at least right here we got our screen right here so what i'm going to do is i am going to press the ps button as you can see it is turning on i got the hmi cable hooked in and now we have video and yeah um previously before we didn't get not a single thing on the screen so yeah everything looks to be working 100 percent fine now so now we're going to have a happy customer with a brand new HDMI port on a PlayStation 5 game console. So I'm just going to put the rest of this back together, get that customer call, let them know the success of this game console. But if you guys want to learn how to repair any other 
game console or want to see more videos like this please make sure you go ahead and subscribe to their channel like the video if this video did help you guys out at the same time and comment below if you want me to repair a retro game console or, whatever, or if you have any questions just leave it down below in the comments and i'll try to get back to you guys as quick as possible but besides that i appreciate you guys stopping by and checking out this video you guys have a good night see ya